Good afternoon, Mr. K at Beckman Catholic with an update for families in the Beckman community Friday, August 7th. Let's start today's update with prayer. Please join me in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you've been with us from the very beginning, and you'll be there at the very end. Looking back over our lives, we can see that you were with us even when we were unaware of your presence, guiding us and drawing us closer to you. Give us courage and confidence in our futures, believing that your hand is upon us every day, whether we are aware of it or not. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, again, if you're looking for virus information on a statewide basis, uh, coronavirus.iowa.gov is a good resource for that. A new page of data has been started this week to be shared with the public, and that includes a 14-day rolling positivity rate uh, for school districts to view. This number is important because it's helping to determine the mode of instructions that'll, or instruction that will be allowed um, and permissible through the documentation that the Iowa Department of Public Health and the Iowa Department of Education has provided. So if you're interested in that information, there's a link now that talks about positivity rates by district, and you can take a look at that as well. Um, and once again, we continue to pray for all those who've been impacted by this pandemic. Thank you to everyone who came Tuesday for registration, and we thank those who have made arrangements to come at other times this week. Um, to complete that process as well. If you haven't completed that process yet, um, we'd ask you to first start with the e-registration components on the website, on our, on our school's website, that particular page is listed below that outlines step-by-step -step what needs to be done. And then once you have those items completed, we ask you to contact the office to set up a time to bring in the items that you need to, to drop off. Um, we did notice that some folks have had issues accessing PowerSchool and we apologize for those inconveniences that have happened. We did do an upgrade over the summer that included information on contact screens. And as that upgrade was completed and work was done on that, um, it has uh, caused some issues for some individuals to be able to access their accounts. So if you're in that situation and you're still having problems or you can't complete the e-registration process because you can't have access or you can't get your access to work properly, please contact Wynn and she'll help walk you through that and get those items resolved. We also wanna say thanks to everyone who brought um, materials and supplies, including tissues, paper, towels, and sanitizing wipes when you came for registration. It is appreciated. If you forgot to bring those that day, um, we will gladly still take them. You can bring them during the first few days of school or anytime during the year. They, they are greatly appreciated. Also, a couple items came up during registration and in the days following in regards to school schedules where we've had some questions from students. Uh, the first one is about lockers. So students, normally your locker number is listed on that printed schedule we provide at registration. We are in the process of reassigning lockers so that every student this year will have an individual locker. Um, due to the COVID situation, we are not going to be sharing lockers. So we had to do some reassigning of those and that's in process. So you'll have a locker assigned to you before the first day of school. Also, we, were still, we are still finishing up the seventh and eighth grade exploratories and those are now being entered into PowerSchool on the schedules that were provided on Tuesday on paper, the sixth period class was not listed. So uh, I did get some questions about my kid, my student was interested in band and I'm not seeing it. Band is one of those sixth hour exploratories, so that's why it's not there. So we are in the process of getting those in. They'll be in in the next couple of days. So by the end of next week, if you're still not seeing that your um, students in band and they were intending that, please let us know. On an update on the school calendar, our board has agreed to keep our first day of school scheduled as Thursday, August 20th. You may have seen earlier this week that Dubuque and Western Dubuque schools have pushed back their start dates from their early dates they had intended next week uh, and instead are starting August 24th. We've looked at that and, and we wanna to try to keep things as we've had it, so we'll be starting on the 20th. That does mean we will not have bus transportation from Western Dubuque on the 20th and 21st, so parents, please be aware of that. Also, just a reminder that uh, until mid-November, uh, at the earliest, is our, it is our understanding that Western Dubuque will continue to maintain their Monday through Thursday schedule, which means they will not be providing bus transportation on Fridays during the school year. So families that may need assistance with that, or if you're a family that could help another family with transportation on those days, we'd ask you to complete the Google form that's listed on the website here, um, and we will put this in today's update as well. Um, please complete that form by 3 p.m. on Monday because then we can start to look at how we can provide some help to those that are in need. So again, if you are in need of transportation assistance on Fridays during the school year, or you're a family who'd be willing to help out another family, uh, please be sure to fill that out by Monday afternoon. 
Also, just a reminder that we do have an at-home learning option available to families who'd like to exercise that for the first, for starting with the first month of the year. Um, the idea of that would be as students would participate using Google Meets or Zoom with their classmates attending in person uh, using their Chromebook from home. Uh, and then we will have set up times for teachers to check in with those students weekly as well. So if you would like to exercise that option for your students, we'd ask you to fill out the Google form that's listed on this page and we'll make sure that we delineate between the two uh, in the update today as well that comes via email. Um, we'd ask that this form, if you're gonna look at the at-home learning option, that you would complete that for each individual student. We're also asking those to be submitted by 3 p.m. on Monday. If you have questions about either of these, please feel free to contact the office uh, on Monday. We'll be happy to answer your questions. So some other, some other general updates just to let you know of things that are going on. We've talked a lot about that we are teaming with a number of groups and individuals as we work on getting ready for the school year. One of those groups that we've been able to meet with is the Dubuque County Public Health Incident Management Team. We had a meeting with area schools in Dubuque County yesterday and discussed a variety of topics, uh, including the, the recent information that we received from the Department of Public Health and the State Department of Education on changing those delivery modes, talking about close contact, how contact tracing will be done if, if necessary during the school year. Um, and so just some general pieces of that as well. So following that meeting, we sent that incident management team a list of some follow-up questions based on the information that they shared with us. And we're awaiting some of those responses as they're able to get us that information. Once we receive that information, we'll continue to share out more details um, to help you to understand how some of the processes will work as we start the school year. Uh, and and on, a good, on a good note yesterday as well, uh, it's the intention of that, public, that incident management team to meet with schools on a weekly basis as we start the school year. So um, information sharing is something we're continuing to try to do with one another. Um, and we continue to get information normally on a multiple times a week on a variety of different topics, which is helping us as we continue to make plans for the upcoming school year. So we'll continue to share info with you um, through updates such as this as we gear up for August 20th. Uh, but I, as, I, as I say that, I just want folks to continue to keep in mind that these plans continue to be works in progress and are subject to change um, as the circumstances with COVID continue to be fluid um, as well. So that 14 day positivity rate that I mentioned earlier in today's update is something we're gonna keep an eye on. Right now it's been hovering in Dubuque County between 11 and 12%. And we pray and hope that that number continues to go on a decrease rather than go on an increase. Um, if those numbers continue to increase, then we, that's when we have to start to look at um, potentially making changes to things. So that's why it's important to continue to follow the guidance and the guidelines we're receiving about practicing social distancing, washing, washing hands, um, and, and doing those things as well. So again, our plans are current as of today, but there still could be additional changes before we start school on August 20th. A few other items non-COVID related. So first off, Fall Sports Spirit Store. Uh, clothing orders are being taken online through Sunday at 11.59 p.m. There are items available for football, volleyball, cross country, as well as some general Beckman Catholic items. Those are only available online through the link that's listed here, and it'll be in today's update as well. Again, orders are taken until 11.59 p.m. on Sunday evening. Last items, I wanna share a couple of good news items as well. Uh, we received officially word yesterday that the following students were recognized as winners in their divisions at the FFA AgriScience Fair that was held virtually earlier this year. So we wanna say congratulations to Gabrielle Hager, Tessa Tauke, Tyler Sauron, Jasmine Hager, Grace Helly, Lauren Cherney, Lauren Goldsmith, Katherine Grebner, and Kelly Snyder. We had a number of other students who also competed in the AgriScience Fair, and it was a challenge to do that this year in particular because it was virtual. So thanks for all who participated. Congratulations to those who have won, um, and we, uh, we wish you best luck in the national competition. Um, however, that's going to be done this year, and we wish you the best of luck moving forward. And, uh, and again, thank you to Mrs. Kleesner and to Mrs. Mauser for their work with these students. We also want to wrap up today by thanking the Dyersville Area Community Foundation. Um, they have a COVID-19 fund and through that fund we were able to apply for a grant that allowed us to purchase a pressure wash, washer mister for the school. We'll be able to use this um, with some disinfectant solutions um, and be able to spray down a variety of different areas and, and equipment within the building. Um, so we're excited to have this, the, the project or the, the equipment arrived today 
Uh, Mr. Troutman intends to be able to utilize it right away with some of our athletic programs that are currently going on. And our custodial maintenance staff will use this as part of the cleaning protocols we've set up for COVID. So we thank the Community Foundation for their support. Have a great weekend uh, as we continue to wrap up or ramp, ramp up for this school year. If you have questions, please contact the office. We'll be happy to answer those for you as well. Have a great rest of your day and a good weekend.